are back here on Titans Talk. Tennessee goes down to Jacksonville and wins 37 to 19 yesterday. Doesn't erase all the bad that happened in New York a couple of weeks ago against the Jets, but it does get them back on track, and at least for now, with the Colts playing as we speak in Baltimore on Monday Night Football, has the Titans two games clear in the win column in the AFC South. Our John Burton was in Jacksonville for the game and filed this postgame report. Steve, after last week's overtime disaster in New York against the Jets, this was simply a game the Titans had to have. And it was a day of complimentary football for the two-tone blue. An opportunistic defense that bent for a good part of the afternoon but didn't break, coupled with an efficient and methodical offense, led to a 37-19 win over the division rival Jaguars here in Jacksonville to put the Titans back over the 500 mark. This is a tough place to play. Um, they have a lot of young guys in their team that are very talented, very hungry, and, um, you know, just happy to get this one, get back on track. Not going to apologize for winning. Obviously, it wasn't pretty. It wasn't perfect at all. We got a lot of stuff we need to clean up, but, you know, happy to get a win down here in Duval. Uh, whenever you get a division win, uh, no matter what that record is, NFL, it's, it's hard to win in this league. So uh, it, it gives us momentum. It gives us some, some confidence. Definitely have respect for the way they played. They came out and played us hard, played us tough, and weren't giving up anything easy for sure. And the journey figures to get a little bit tougher for the Titans going forward. A week from Monday night, they play host to the Buffalo Bills at Nissan Stadium before taking on Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs the following week, making today's win over the Jaguars all the more important. In Jacksonville, John Burton, News Channel 5 Sports. We bring Hutton back in here for our keys to the game. Todd Downing's offense and his play calling took some criticism over the first four games in his stint as offensive coordinator. But today, 37 points and a perfect balance with 184 yards passing and rushing. I thought Todd Downing's game plan was a bright spot. He was creative in how he worked around the offensive line issues and limitations. Henry was effective outside of the tackles. And Downing was able to get him on the edge quite a bit. Cam Batson took three direct snaps. Chester Rogers had a carry for nine yards and it all came in rhythm. All of that And the first half was smooth and efficient where Ryan Tannehill finished the first 15 minutes, five completions, 79 yards. It led to scores on four consecutive drives, more touchdowns, less field goals. That equals a win. Yeah, a lot of missed tackles defensively, but the two takeaways doubled the amount of turnovers they forced all year. What a way to start a game. I mean, Elijah Molden forces the fumble. Bayard has the scoop and score. It was a huge boost that gave this team some energy right out of the gate. Were there big plays allowed? Yes, but not the backbreakers. After their first two touchdown drives, the Jags hit another explosive play when LaVishka Chenault had that 58-yard catch and run. And on that same drive, the defense produced the goal line stand. Jacksonville only scored one on their uh, final seven possessions. That is great news for a defense that needed a kick. I mean, that, that was really good today. Stood tall late and in the red zone. It was a familiar sight to close things out. After losing for the first time ever with Derrick Henry topping 150 yards rushing last week, the King gets 133 touchdowns and a W this week. Road game means it's time for another solid Derrick Henry performance. It was a grind against eight-man, sometimes nine-man boxes, but he finally got going. He had 42 yards on their touchdown drive to open the second half, and then 39 yards on the touchdown drive to completely put the game away. His game improves as the game wears on. He has 414 combined yards in second halves this season. The third and fourth quarters today, 18 carries, 99 yards, two touchdowns. He's the king of the road for a reason. Yeah, Henry now with 62 career rushing touchdowns, trailing only Eddie George and Earl Campbell in team history. <laughs> Lofty company, as we mentioned earlier, he now has the best 40 game stretch in NFL history just in front of Jim Brown. It seems like every week you put Derrick Henry and what he's doing up against some of the all-time greats either in franchise history or in the history of the league. That is the type of company he keeps with everything he is doing right now. Back to the phones we go. We say hello to Jan. Jan, good evening. What's going on? Hey, how you doing? Good. Um, I, I, I really uh, think that a lot of the weight is going to fall off on the coaches, you know. I mean, they, they're they having to use guys off the bench, and um, I think they're doing a good job. But, you know, I think they ought to design some plays for the guys coming off the bench 
you know, not just put a guy in a gather, another guy's slot and say, well, go ahead and run this play. And I think they did some of that uh, Sunday. But, you know, like you look at somebody like New England, you know, and, and I know when they took Tom Brady away from there, they kind of really sunk. But, you know, they they brought people off the bench. You're up next. You're up next. And um, I think the Titans are, are uh, you know, that kind of team, man. I think those guys coming up off the bench, you know, we paid a lot of money for them. They're sitting on the bench. It's time to go in and play. Well, they talk a lot about it, and Jan, we appreciate the call, that they need guys to step up in those situations, especially with that long injury list that they have, that the guys that come in, it's next man up, and you are expected to perform at a certain level. But we also have to be real that the guy you bring off the bench is not Julio Jones. The, the Titans at their best is a team that has Julio Jones on the field. Just like they're better when Anthony Ferkser is playing tight end than anybody they can back up, or better when Taylor Lewan's a left tackle than anybody else that can play in that position if he were to go down. So when that's the case, it does fall on the coaches to try to put the guys who are out there and put the team in the best position they can possibly be for that play, for that drive, for that game. I think what's going to be interesting over the next few weeks is, one, how healthy can this team get? Of the 21 guys on the injury report, how many of them play? How many of them work their way back in to being a part of what the Titans are doing? Or how many of them get fully healthy to be at 100% and they're not like A.J. Brown yesterday where he's limited on a snap count? You need him to be full go. How much does that happen in the next couple of weeks for this team? And then how do the coaches approach some of their game planning? Because I'm not sure we know exactly what the identity of this Titans team is yet. They obviously run the football and want to be physical with Derrick Henry, and they've been effective at that. But the mark of this team in the past has been run the football, play action, big shots, explosive plays offensively, and then defense be opportunistic. We've really only seen run the football with this team. And the, everything else has come in, in, in bits and pieces, but not consistently and not in the complementary fashion that they always preach. And so can they get back to doing that? Will we see that over the next few weeks? Or do the coaches have to adjust their game plan a little bit, perhaps how they call defensive plays, maybe the blitz packages and pressures that they try to bring, or what they do offensively to try to generate some of those bigger plays in the passing game? Do they have to adjust as a coaching staff? Because the personnel, frankly, is either not on the field or not playing up to the standards they expected because of some of these injuries. That, I think, is going to be very interesting to watch. Go to line four now. Say hello to Travis. Travis, what's going on tonight? Uh, good evening, sir. You bet. Uh, I have a couple of comments and then an observation. Uh, first of all, I think the Titans actually do have a pretty good football team. However, they've been exposed a little bit uh, early in the season, especially with defenses pulling stunts on them. And I don't like when a linebacker can, can come straight up the middle and tackle our quarterback. However, that can be remedied relatively easily. And I'm, I'm not dissing the offensive line. Uh, but now the next two weeks, you talk about challenge of the year. You've got two powerhouse football teams that are incredibly explosive with two great quarterbacks. However, I do think we do have a great quarterback. And, of course, we have the beast uh, uh, behind him. Uh, my question is, how do you think they're going to fare the next two weeks? And if they take two losses, do you think they can overcome that over the AFC in general? And where do you think other teams would place them as far as their superiority? Which, of course, they're first place in the AFC uh, South right now, but not necessarily a powerhouse in the AFC. I'll hang up, and I will respect your comments. Yeah, thanks, Travis. I think these games are important to find out where the Titans are, to find out what they're doing as a team and the improvements they've made from the first five games of the season. I don't think they're do or die here in week six or seven. I still look at it this way. I think the Titans are clearly the best team in the AFC South, and as long as they don't suffer 
even more significant injuries, I think they'll remain that way the rest of the way. So I, I think they're going to be the AFC South division champion, even based off of what we've seen so far. And obviously they're up two games in the win column. But this will tell us a lot about where they fit in that contender status within the AFC. I mean, right now the Bills to me are a clear head and shoulders above what the Titans have played in any game up to this point this season. I think the Chiefs have to be there after being in the Super Bowl each of the last couple of years. I think the Ravens are playing great football. I think, you know, the Bengals and Browns have shown flashes. The Steelers aren't any team to sneeze at. You've got a Raiders team that now has a big mess on its hands here tonight with the news about John Gruden resigning, but still capable. It got off to a good start this season. I think you have a Chargers team that showed yesterday that they can play with anybody in the league. So there are several good teams in the AFC. I, I put the Titans kind of at the bottom of that list right now. And that should be good enough to get them into the playoffs. It should be good enough to get to a division championship and have a home playoff game as we saw a couple years ago. You just get into the playoffs and you play well and you're healthy at that point. And you can make a run against anybody. And I think it's possible the Titans can do that. But they need to prove, perhaps to themselves as much as everybody on the outside, that they can compete with those top teams in the AFC. Because make no mistake, the expectation for this season and this team was not just to win the AFC South again. It was to be a true contender. And to be there in January and to make noise in January and potentially get back to the Super Bowl for just the second time since the team has moved here to Tennessee. That's the expectation. And right now they look like a team that is far from that. But there is time to turn things around. Got to take a break. Our phone line's still open. 737-7767. Sorry, off a digit. 737-7767. We'll be back. This is Titans Talk on News Channel 5+. Plus.